before you do anything with the motor compartment, you're supposed to disconnect the, the interconnect here. This thing actually breaks the connection of the battery. There's another interconnect inside the inside the uh, motor compartment, but this this actually makes sure that the battery is disconnected. So th this vehicle is out of warranty, and Toyota only warrantied it for three years or 36,000 miles. So our car, and <laughs> if we had had the EV1, we could do the same sorts of things. So before you go into the uh, motor controller here in the power electronics unit, which is mostly empty space, uh, you, you ought to really shut off the interconnect make sure that the main battery pack 288 volts nominal is not live so we did that and you're supposed to wait a couple minutes for the capacitors to de-energize. Uh, ready to take the um, power electronics unit cover off and replace the one of the capacitors which which blows out which is what happened our, <laughs> for three years we haven't been able to charge with magnet charger so we've been charging directly using a conductive charger with no ill effects and that shows the wire that we put inside that actually goes to a, a breaker and then that's where you connect it up for the to do the conductive charging the thing on on top is um, the EV control underneath it is the charger rectifier and that's where the unit uh, fails so we have to take this out to get to the other thing down below little, these little uh, connectors reflect Toyota's view that American technicians are or I guess that we're just not very skilled. So all these are really sort of fail safe. It's almost impossible to put these into the wrong slots. So we're going to disconnect these little deals here and then take this unit off. There's the EV control unit that's been taken out and that is the charger rectifier there. This is the one that uh, supposedly failed. This is the one supplied by volunteer engineers which would be a valid replacement. And notice it's slightly different size. So <laughs> it, it won't exactly be the same. And there it is. Uh, that was the one that supposedly failed from the Nogasso car, and that will be the replacement one. But I'll have to do something with this uh, cap, which it doesn't exactly fit this uh, different replacement uh, capac uh, capacitor. Assuming that this, this little black strip that's in there underneath this is uh, for stopping the vibration of this capacitor, I put a second black strip from a spare uh, one of these little deals underneath these two pads. So this has a um, one of the original black strips up against the capacitor and then it has padding up against the metal. So it's in there pretty firmly and I think uh, whether or not Toyota intended that to be for vibration or whatever it seems like it's pretty good. Okay so this is this is back together now and all these connectors are back as you can see, this is a beautiful plate of sushi. It's, it's visually appealing uh, in its complexity, even though most of it's just here to fill up space. So they could have actually put a little gas genset here, or uh, over here they could have put a fast charger like we have in the back. I'll try it out with the magnet charger, which uh, failed about three years ago. And I guess if it doesn't work, you probably won't see this video. <laughs> Certainly if it bursts into flames, you won't see this video, but most likely it'll all work. So now for the big test. Will the magnet charger work? Here's our portableized magnet chargers. They're uh, safety connected to their own dedicated, cir dedicated circuit, as you can see there. And that goes right to the solar system. So now let's see what happens. Well, we get a green light. Supposedly it's charging. Don't smell anything burning, so it's probably okay. So that was the problem. For whatever reason, Toyota started selling, actually selling the Toyota RAV4EV in about March or April uh, 2002. And I guess Chevron surprised them in November with an offer to settle the lawsuit. Because abruptly in December of 2002, they announced an end to the production program of the RAV4EV, settlement to the lawsuit, and an end to any production or availability of the EV95 battery. 
which was needed uh, for the RAV4 EV and also for all other successful EVs with a range of more than 100 miles and lasting more than 100,000 miles. Now up until the end, Toyota kept improving the internals of the RAV4 EV. It's amazing, like the Toyota engineers were working feverishly to improve the thing and the Toyota management had to bow to Chevron and kill the program. You can guess why. Chevron had bought the battery patents from General Motors on October 10th, 2000. Didn't want any electric cars for sale. So even in the midst of all of this turmoil when Toyota is being sued by Chevron, there's, there's a big change in the design which Toyota engineers were trying to devise and the people in Toyota who were good were trying to devise a way to keep this thing going and to improve it, you know, up until the end. The Toyota people were working their hearts out.